This video is sponsored by Squarespace. As a concept, Cyberpunk is all about combining the seedy underworld with advanced technology in a dystopian future. And if that doesn't sound like the perfect setting for a game series, well, you're either lying to yourself or you're just wrong. It's a city of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. It's about time we leave the real world behind and step into Night City. Wake the f up, Samurai. We have a city to burn. This is the evolution of Cyberpunk 2077. When new wave science fiction began hitting libraries in the late 1960s and 70s, it focused on the grittier side of sci-fi, the drug culture, a sexual revolution, and how technology might be abused by society's misfits. You ain't anywhere without an upgrade. You need a softer touch. Stronger spine, just taking over Night City ain't gonna be easy. <laughs> In. Comic books continued to explore these themes, a great example being Judge Dredd, first published in 1977. Then, in 1982, Blade Runner came out in movie theaters. But it was in 1984, with the release of William Gibson's debut novel titled Neuromancer, that most people agree the genre of cyberpunk came into its own. It was a momentous achievement for the genre, and for Gibson himself, who's now considered one of the founding fathers of cyberpunk. Drawing on trends from the real world, like punk culture and computer hackers, cyberpunk did away with the idea of a utopian society and imagined a much darker, yet very entertaining future. The darker, grittier aspects of sci-fi struck a chord with many readers, viewers, and gamers, in particular, a man named Mike Pondsmith. During his college years in the 70s, Mike had been introduced to the pen and paper role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons. But he wasn't a big fan of the fantasy setting. Having grown up in a military family, he much preferred action and science fiction. So when a sci-fi tabletop game similar to D&D called Traveler came out in 1977, Mike's interest was piqued. However, he wasn't quite satisfied with the game's mechanics. So he set about rewriting the game for personal use under the name Imperial Star. After graduating from the University of California with degrees in graphic design and behavioral psychology, Pondsmith worked briefly in the video game sector, but in the early 80s, video game technology had a lot of constraints. So it wasn't long before Mike went back to his main passion, pen and paper games. The first game he designed in its entirety was called Mechton, and it was a mecha-based game heavily influenced by manga and anime, such as Mobile Suit Gundam. The game proved to be a hit, and it convinced Pond Smith he had a solid future in game design, so much so that in 1985, Mike founded the company R. Talsorian Games. It was through this company that Maximum Mike, as he came to be known by players and colleagues, designed and published the first ever cyberpunk tabletop role-playing game. Though Pond Smith revealed he did not read the book Neuromancer until later in life, he claims that the film Blade Runner was a big influence and called upon other cyberpunk works of the 70s and 80s. The first edition of the Cyberpunk game was released in 1988 and would retrospectively come to be known as Cyberpunk 2013, referencing the in-game date setting. The game came with three booklets, each explaining the various elements of the game. For example, the third booklet, called Welcome to Night City, covered all aspects of the game world that players would find themselves in. Originally intended to be a placeholder for any major metropolitan area, Night City allowed players to imagine their own dark, crime-ridden city to further immerse themselves in the game. In the next edition of the game, however, the city was expanded into a fictitious location with its own district history. The follow-up game, Cyberpunk 2020, was first released in the real-world year of 1990. As you can probably guess, it advanced the in-game timeline and expanded on the game world with new events, technology, and characters. 
In 1995, author Stephen Billius wrote the first of two cyberpunk novels based on the tabletop role-playing game. The Revengers was about a gang of rejects, led by Bite Boy and Bite Girl, who attempt to create a new world by helping the digital librarians. The second novel, titled Hollow Men, follows Joshua Victor, who joins a gang of netrunners to free the net for everyone to use. Fun fact, two independent collectible card games have been licensed and produced based on the cyberpunk games. The first, called Netrunner, was designed by Richard Garfield and released by Wizards of the Coast in 1996. The second was Cyberpunk CCG, which was designed by Peter Wax and published by Social Games in 2003. Another version of the pen and paper game, aptly named Cyberpunk version 3.0, was released in 2005. Set in the 2030s in the aftermath of the Fourth Corporate War, the net has been corrupted and six new subcultures known as alt cults, one of whom are the edge runners, emerge as successors. The change of setting and the artwork used within the gamebook were met with negative criticism from fans, many of whom discount Cyberpunk version 3.0 as an alternate entry rather than part of the main series. In 2007, Cyberpunk, the Arasaka's plot was a mobile game developed by Mayhem Studio. A 2D platformer with RPG elements, the game's main character is Sam Gibson, a man who struggles to recall his past before becoming a solo which is essentially like a mercenary. The Arasaka Corporation wants Gibson dead, and the protagonist, who's been framed for murder, must find out why with the help of a netrunner named Kay. Fast forwarding to 2019, the most recent pen and paper RPG released in Cyberpunk's main series is Cyberpunk Red. Set in 2045, it follows the events of Cyberpunk 2020 and uses a streamlined rule set while introducing new mechanics. Preceded by the release of a simplified boxed set known as the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit, it allowed players who were unfamiliar with the series to get up to speed with the game's lore so far, resulting in a more complete and enjoyable experience. However, the core rulebook of Cyberpunk Red was delayed several times, partly due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but mainly because they wanted it to align with the release of a highly anticipated video game adaptation. Back in 2012, at CD Projekt Red's Summer Conference, it was announced that the Polish game developer would take on the mammoth task of adapting Mike Pondsmith's Cyberpunk into an open-world video game. Renowned for its success with the critically acclaimed Witcher series, CD Projekt Red had a great track record, so fans were hyped to see what they could do with an already much-loved genre. The degree is arbitrary, the definitions blurred. If I'm to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose at all. The game entered production in 2016, following the completion of The Witcher 3's Wild Hunt Blood and Wine expansion pack. A team of 50 Project Red staff were initially assigned to Cyberpunk 2077, though this number would end up growing significantly over time. Focusing on optimization from the outset, the developer partnered with established companies like NVIDIA for real-time ray tracing and other impressive features. As a result, the game ended up costing an eye-watering 1.2 billion Polish slate to produce, equal to 313 million US dollars. This made it one of the most expensive video games of all time. As early as 2013, the first teaser was shown to the world, and to say people were excited would be an understatement. Many people had high hopes and said things like, this is going to be another game changer, I know it! In CD Projekt Red, we trust. Well, this did not age well. More on that later though. When a trailer was showcased at E3 2018, it quickly became one of the most anticipated games of all time. Main issues, sky-high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. 
Cyberpunk 2077 even picked up over 100 awards, including Most Wanted Game, Best PC Game, and Best Sony PlayStation Game. During an E3 2019, another trailer was shown, and wow, CD Projekt Red sure knows how to get people excited. The inclusion of Keanu Reeves as a voice actor for the iconic rocker boy Johnny Silverhand was a very welcome surprise. People on Reddit were going wild too, with some saying things like, Hello boss, sad to tell you, but I'll be sick in April 2020 for the whole month. Yeah, I bet he wasn't sick anymore after one day of playing though. Fun fact, Mike Pondsmith has worked as a consultant on Cyberpunk 2077 since 2012, and also appears in-game as the DJ on 107.3 Moro Rock Radio, one of the radio stations in Night City. You gotta love the passion Maxima Mike has for Cyberpunk. Mind reading. Hacking without a deck. Telekinesis. However, constant delays did not go down well with fans, and some game developers even received death threats. Yikes. After a long, long wait, Cyberpunk 2077 was finally available to play on PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC on the 10th of December, 2020. On the 15th of February, 2022, it was also released on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. While heavily inspired by the tabletop games, lead Quest designer Powell Sasko revealed that their biggest inspirations for Cyberpunk 2077's story were Vampire, The Masquerade Bloodlines, and Akira. Taking place in the familiar yet dangerous metropolis of Night City, players take control of V, a mercenary on the rise in a corporate-ruled future. These corporations, such as the Arasaka Corporation, deal in everything from weapons to robotics, cybernetics, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, communications, and more. Arisaka, making the world a better place, one weapon at a time. Players have a wealth of customization options, including the ability to choose V's gender, and the game starts with a choice of three life paths, Street Kid, Nomad, and Corpo. Cyberpunk 2077 is an open-world action role-playing game with FPS-style gameplay quests, and objectives that can be completed in a variety of ways. Although originally slated to be a single-player experience with multiplayer elements, the multiplayer option was not available at launch, with CD Projekt Red saying that it was still in the research and development phase. Post-release, Cyberpunk 2077 received praise for its narrative, setting, and graphics, but it was heavily criticized for certain themes, including its representation of transgender characters. However, most people were extremely happy with the game after its release and said things like, I'm so glad this game was released when it's ready and not a moment sooner. I'm, of course, kidding. The much anticipated release of Cyberpunk 2077 was nothing short of a disaster. The game was buggy, glitchy, and unplayable on many platforms. Players were met with a string of glitches and crashes. Issues, sky high rate of violence, and more people living below the poverty line than anywhere else. Can't deny it, it's all true. But everybody still wants to live here. This city's always got a promise for you. Might be a lie, an illusion, but it's there. Just around the corner, and it keeps you going. City of Dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. This was a huge disappointment for fans of the game, who had been waiting for years to get their hands on it. The game went from hype to meme just one day after being released. The game on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One felt more like an open beta than an actual game. Maybe. If we're lucky, we can actually play the full version in 2077. The major issues led to Sony removing the game from the PlayStation Store while CD Projekt patched things up. The game's developers were even subject to investigations and lawsuits for their perceived attempts to downplay the severity of technical problems before the game's release. 
causing CD Projekt Red to pay a settlement of $1.85 million. Players who had pre-ordered the game were left feeling betrayed and disappointed. CD Projekt Red had promised them a game that would change the open world genre, but instead delivered a broken mess. Players on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were stuck with an unplayable game. Suspiciously, CD Projekt Red had refused to release console copies ahead of launch, and players could only see the PC version instead. IGN gave the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions a 4 out of 10, and said in their review, It makes me sad to think that so many people are having their first Cyberpunk 2077 experience ruined this way, because when it works, it's a fantastic RPG. The PlayStation 4 version of the game received a score of 57 on Metacritic. Meanwhile, over 10,000 users gave an average rating of 3.8 and said things like, False advertisement. The game does not work properly on old generation of consoles. It should have never been released on PS4. After all this waiting, I feel like I just took part in the biggest scam in gaming history. I'm convinced 50% of their budget went on making the trailers and the other 50% went on signing Keanu Reeves. Something feels off here. You don't say. Meanwhile, the PC version received much more praise. Digital Spy gave the game a perfect score and said, Cyberpunk 2077 is a fantastic game that we have never experienced before and is a window into the future of next-gen gaming and what it's capable of. Overall, the PC version received a score of 86, perhaps not as high as The Witcher 3 with a score of 93, but still an impressive score. After arguably the worst launch in gaming history, Cyberpunk has continued to improve markedly since its introduction, and as of April 2022, it has gone on to sell over 18 million copies. Fun fact, music for Cyberpunk 2077 was composed by three men, including Marcin Persibel Lowitz, who was the composer for The Witcher 3. In total, they created a whopping 7.5 hours of music. To complement the video game, a number of digital comics have been released that are set in the same world as Cyberpunk 2077. Published by Dark Horse Comics, they include titles such as Cyberpunk 2077, Big City Dreams, Where's Johnny, Trauma Team, and Blackout. If you love Cyberpunk but aren't much of a comic book fan, You can also watch Cyberpunk Edge Runners the anime, which premiered on Netflix in September 2022. A standalone 10 episode story, it follows a street kid named David who's just trying to survive in the tech obsessed, body modification heavy metropolis that is Night City. Having everything to lose, he chooses to become an Edge Runner, aka an outlaw, also known as a Cyberpunk. With the release of the animation, there came the Edge Runners update for the game. Not only were various fixes and improvements made, but it also added new Edge Runner inspired content to the game, including new clothing, weapons, and missions. Balance, friendship, love. The hell else are we supposed to fight for? Scheduled for release in 2023 is a paid expansion for the game called Phantom Liberty. It is said to be a major addition to the game for the ninth generation of video game consoles. That I shall faithfully serve the new United States of America. That I shall faithfully serve the new United States of America. On behalf of all Americans, I thank you for your service. But there is more exciting news. Developer CD Projekt announced they're creating sequels to both The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077. 
Squarespace is the perfect platform for anyone looking to create a beautiful professional website with dozens of options for customizing your page, powerful drag and drop editor, and the ability to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, you can easily create a website yourself. Plus, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights. This makes Squarespace the ideal, all-in-one, easy-to-use platform. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com slash flatlife to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Even though Cyberpunk 2077 had a shaky start, to say the least, I'm glad the developers haven't given up on the game and continue to push it forward. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the cyberpunk genre, and I can't wait to see how it continues further into the future. I hope you had as much fun watching this video as we did making it. If you enjoyed the video, you might also like the evolution of video game graphics, Grand Theft Auto, or Assassin's Creed. Thanks for watching.